Welcome to IAS project. In this video, we will talk about political organization during early Vedic period. So the early Vedic period started around 1500 BC and it lasted up to 1000 BC. Now let's look at the role of Raja or the king during the early Vedic period. We can say that during Rig Vedic period, king had very basic duties. For example, the king was the protector of the tribe. His duty was to protect the tribe from other tribes as well as Dasyus. Dasyus are nothing but non-Aryan people. Another duty was to protect the tribe's wealth. When we say tribe's wealth, we generally do not mean gold and silver because for Aryans, cattle was their wealth. Another important duty was to lead the tribesmen into war. And the last one was to order sacrifices and to offer prayers on behalf of the tribe. This was also very important function. However, during the early part of Rig Vedic period, this last function was not very very sophisticated. This became sophisticated towards the end of Rig Vedic period and in the later Vedic period, it went up to a new level. So we can say that during the early part of Rig Vedic period, these three were the most important functions. However, this was also an important function during the Rig Vedic period. But the importance of this function became even higher during the end of Rig Vedic period and in the later Vedic period. So as I told you, one of the important duties of Rajan was to make war and to lead the tribesmen into war. Why did these people fight battles? They fought battles mainly for cattle because cattle was considered as wealth for Aryans. Moreover, these people also fought for land. When I say land, they did not want to occupy the land. They fought for green pastures that are available on the land. Again, if you observe, this is also related to cattle because land was not important as a property. What was important was the grass that is available on the land. That is why Aryans during Rig Vedic period also fought for green pastures that were available on the land. Moreover, these people also fought for water. The importance of water was also from the point of view of cattle. So we can say that the main aim of battles was to fight for cattle. Cattle were so important in the Rig Vedic polity that the king or the Rajan was also called as Gopa or Gopati. Gopati simply means the protector of cattle. As we have seen here, it was a duty of the king to protect the cattle of his tribe's people. Moreover, the king also sought support of Samiti and Sabha for various activities. So when these Aryan Rajas made war, whoever won the war collected booty. Booty simply means the loot that was gotten by the winner. Moreover, the winning kings also got tributes from the losing king. So we can say that both of these were very important sources of revenue for the Aryan kings. When the war was over, both of these were collected and these were redistributed by the Raja to the priests as well as to the other tribesmen within the tribe. So this is basically a kind of distributive system that the Rajan was taking care of after collecting the war booty as well as after collecting the tributes. So we can say that this kind of redistribution acted in the form of a stability within the society of Aryans. Moreover, in the initial period, the Rajan or the king was not considered as divine. There are many theories for kingship. One of such theories was the divine right to rule. This is only extra information I am giving you. This has nothing to do with the history topic. Divine right to rule simply means that the king and the kingdom believes that the king was appointed or the king was sent directly by God to rule. In this way, kings held a superior position and they justified their rule by involving religion or God. So this is called as divine right to rule. Such kind of concept was not existing within the Rig Vedic Aryan period. This is very important observation. Moreover, the Rajan also did not have religious functions in the beginning. In the beginning, he only had very limited religious functions. For example, ordering of sacrifices and supporting the Purohita during these sacrifices. So we can say that the Rajan in the Rig Vedic period was not a priest king. We already talked about priest king when we talked about Indus civilization and compared it with Egyptian civilization. During the ancient Egyptian civilization, the king was called as Pharaoh and the king was basically a priest king. Priest king means that 
the king was not only the king but also the first and the most important or the highest priest within the kingdom. Such kind of priest king was not existing in Rig Vedic period because we had a separate Purohita who was taking care of the sacrifices and rituals. However, the king was ordering these sacrifices. So the Purohita was actually working on the instruction of the king. Whatever the case is, we cannot say that priest king was there in Rig Vedic period. This is also important. All these are basically limitations of the king in early Vedic period. Another limitation was that the king did not have a standing army or a regular army. Then how did the king make war? In times of war, what the king did was he mustered a militia. What is the meaning of militia? Militia in simple words means a temporary army. And generally this kind of temporary army is raised from the civilians. So militia is not a permanent army. Okay, militia is a temporary army that is generally raised from within the common people of the tribe. So during the times of war, the king mustered a militia and the military functions of this militia were performed by different tribal groups. For example, we talked about Gana. Gana was basically a group of people who were nothing but a troop. Other military tribal groups were Vrata, Grama and Sarda. You don't need to remember all these names, but try to remember Gana. So during the Rig Vedic period, the kings or the Rajan probably lived in multi-pillared palaces made of wood. However, we did not find any kind of evidence for this because these people were living in the Indo-Gangetic plains. And in the Indo-Gangetic plains, due to moisture and water, wood easily gets damaged. That is why we did not find any archaeological evidences of multi-pillared palaces of wood. That is why probably they lived in palaces. But we know that these Rajan or these kings offered gifts to priests. What kind of gifts were they? They offered cattle, they offered chariots, horses, ornaments and gold to these priests. This basically shows the importance of priests within the Rig Vedic society. During the battles, Rajan also invoked the support of gods in battles. This was a common feature within all the Aryan tribes. And the most important or the most favorite god these people were invoking was the god Indra. Indra in Rig Vedic literature was called as Purandhara. The meaning of Purandhara is destroyer of forts or destroyer of settlements. Probably during this time there were no forts. So it is best to assume Purandhara means destroyer of settlements. And whose settlements were these? They were settlements of Dasyus. Because Aryans were mainly fighting Dasyus. So this is about the information we know. We do not know about some information. For example, we do not know about what was the justice system during Rig Vedic period. Were there any specialists like judges during Rig Vedic period? We do not know because such kind of information was not written in Rig Vedic period. Moreover, we also do not know if there was any regular revenue system. Regular revenue system means taxation. So taxation was probably not existing during Rig Vedic period. Then how was the king getting money? Mainly from the booty of war. Booty of war simply means the loot the winner was taking after winning a war. Moreover, the winner also got tributes from the losing side. So both of these were an important revenue source for the king. Moreover, voluntary contributions were also there from within the tribesmen to the king. Such kind of voluntary contributions were called as Bali. Very, very important from point of view of prelims. So, Bali was not a tax. Please remember this. Bali was basically a voluntary contribution that was given by some tribesmen to the king. So, all tribesmen did not need to give Bali to the king. So, Bali, booty of war as well as tributes that were gotten from war were the important sources of income for the Rajan. And what did Rajan do with this? Rajan gave some of this wealth to priests, he gave some to his tribesmen and the remaining he spent it on offering sacrifices and rituals because sacrifices were very important in the Vedic period. So since there was no taxation, probably tax collectors were also absent. So all this is about Rig Vedic period only. We are not talking about later Vedic period. Please remember this. So Rig Vedic Aryans were mainly semi-nomadic people. Nomadic people means wanderers. They do not stay at any place for longer time. However, semi-nomadic means they are not completely wanderers, 
but they did some kind of wandering because for Rig Vedic people cattle was important. However, Rig Vedic people were also doing agriculture. That is why we can say these people as semi-nomadic people. If we talk about administration and government in Rig Vedic period, then there was no civil system and also there was no territorial administration. Why? Because people during this stage were on a constant process of expansion. So the tribes were constantly expanding from within their area into other areas. So that is why in the initial lectures we said that Aryans initially settled in eastern Afghanistan, then they moved into Indus region and finally they moved into Gangetic region, western Uttar Pradesh and eventually during the later Vedic period they spread almost up to Bihar and Bengal. This is all explained because these people were constantly migrating from one area to other. That is why there is not so much meaning in having a territorial administration. Moreover, the polity of Aryans was a tribal polity. That is why a civil system or a civil government was also not existing during the Rig Vedic period. So the type of government was basically a tribal system and within this tribal system there was a strong military component. That is why when we talk about Kulapa, Gramani or Vrajapati, all these three are basically related to military aspect because all these three were participating in battles and wars. So the type of government of Rig Vedic period was a tribal system with a strong military component. The weapons that were used by Rig Vedic Aryans were bows and arrows, daggers, axes and lances. Moreover, these people also had horse driven chariots. So when you combine bows and lances with horse driven chariots, they were very very superior in military strategy when compared to Dasyus and other non-Aryans. There is also one more group of people that is mentioned in the Rig Veda. They were nothing but Pani or Panis. Pani or Panis were basically trading people. They conducted long distance trade and this trade was mainly on land route. So I can say these people connected long distance land route trade. The Rig Vedic people or let's say the Rig Vedic tribes that is nothing but Janas often had conflicts with Pani. In Rig Veda it is mentioned that these traders called Pani used to hide the cattle of Aryans in the forest. That is why the Aryan tribes considered these Pani as enemies. This basically appears like an exaggeration. Whatever the case is, this is mentioned in Rig Veda. What is important for us to understand is Panis were traders who were conducting long distance trade and Panis were considered as enemies of Aryans. Other than this, you don't need to know much about Panis. Let's look at a question. With reference to early Vedic period, the term Vidata represents what? Is it the leader of the village, a popular assembly, a Rig Vedic tribe or a king of Bharata clan? If you know the answer to this question, please comment in the comment section. Please like and subscribe. You can download this video from our telegram channel IAS project. The link for this channel is given in the description section below. Thank you.